Hello, Screamer, and welcome to Scream Stream, your weekly guide to horror entertainment. I'm your host, James Gass. If you're new to the show, what I do is review a horror film of the week from one of the various streaming services, spoiler-free, of course. I cover the big news of the horror genre and go over some of the new VOD horror releases. We are well past Thanksgiving now. We're into the month of December, the Christmas season, which is like my second favorite time of the year, right after fall and Halloween. And I kind of want to let you know my plans for December. For me, December is going to be scary Christmas right here on Scream Stream. And what I'm going to do is highlight a Christmas themed horror film every week. I won't do a full review. Because along with the highlighted film, I'm also going to do my regular movie review. So you get just a little extra content all this month. In the very last week of Christmas, I'm going to give you sort of like my list of top Christmas themed horror films. Because there's a bunch of them that I really love, but I can't fit all into five episodes. So for the five episodes, I'll probably just pick a few that I like. Some of them are probably films that I haven't seen before. And just kind of mix it up a little bit and then give my full top list at the end of the month. So to kick off Scary Christmas, this week I'm going to highlight Black Christmas and then move into my review of The Witch from 2015, directed by, written and directed by Robert Eggers. So let's start off with Black Christmas. Now this was a film that I've never seen before. I've heard of it. Uh, I think... When I was looking around at horror film or Christmas horror films years back, I kind of ran across this one and then saw Silent Night, Deadly Night, which I did actually watch. But I never actually got around to watching this one. And this is probably considered one of the first Christmas slasher films or one of the first slasher films, period. And it was was written by Roy Moore and directed by Bob Clark who also went on to direct another iconic Christmas film nine years later called A Christmas Story. So here we have Bob Clark, who gave us two iconic Christmas films at the opposite ends of the genre spectrum, if you will. And this stars Olivia Hussey, Kier Dulia, and Margot Kidder. And for a brief plot synopsis, During a festive yuletide party, a group of sorority sisters receive a creepy call from someone who claims he's going to kill them all. The girls soon realize the threats are serious when one by one, they each fall prey to the mysterious maniac. After directing two relatively ignored horror flicks, which later became cult classics, uh, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things and Death Dream, a Christmas miracle made Bob Clark's 1974 classic a hit. A huge influence on John Carpenter's Halloween, Black Christmas, is frequently credited with helping spawn the slasher sub-genre. Now, this is currently available to stream on Shudder, uh, as well as you can purchase the digital version on Amazon Prime, but you can also pick up the Blu-ray from uh, Scream Factory, which is Shout Factory's horror horror line of Blu-rays. I would recommend you getting the Blu-ray. I like having physical copies of discs. Plus... The Blu-ray comes with like a whole bunch of extra features and all kinds of good stuff, uh, behind the scenes footage, deleted scenes, things like that. Uh, But if you do want to just stream it for yourself before you, you know, spend the, the $16.99 for the Blu-ray, it is available on Shutter, And I do highly recommend this film. I thought it was really great. Well done. Uh, well acted. Uh, Olivia Hussey. I know her mostly from, uh, Psycho 4, she played Norman's mother in that film, and she did an amazing job. She's such a great actress. Uh, and Margot Kidder uh, is, well, you will probably recognize her from the Amityville Horror from 1979. She was Mrs. Lutz or Ms. Lutz. So everybody in this film did such a great job. Uh, again, highly recommend it. It was genuinely a creepy film and this is like watching this film was like uh, for the first time in a long time i was like screaming at the screen (laughs) for these girls don't just don't don't go up there don't go up there oh you idiot 
So it was a really good film. I enjoyed it a lot, and I highly recommend you go check it out. Uh, if you don't have Shutter, you can get like the the seven day free trial. I am not sponsored by Shutter. I just really like their service, so I do recommend getting the free trial trial to watch Black Christmas, uh, iconic horror film, iconic Christmas themed horror film, and one of my new favorites. All right, so let's get into this week's review of The Witch. So it's written and directed by Robert Eggers. It stars Anya Taylor Joy, Ralph Innocent from Game of Thrones, and Kate Kate Dickey, also from Kate, uh, Game of Thrones. And for a brief synopsis, New England, 1630. William and Catherine try to lead a devout Christian life, homesteading on the edge of an impassable wilderness with five children. When their newborn son mysteriously vanishes and their crops fail, the family begin to turn on one another. The witch is a chi- chilling portrait of a family unraveling within their own sins, leaving them prey for an inescapable evil. So let me start off with acting. First off, the acting was absolutely amazing from everybody. And I was most impressed by the two children who played Mercy and Jonas because they were so young and the dialogue in the film was all period dialogue. So Robert Eggers did all the research and the dialogue came straight from journals of Puritans who lived at the time. So it was all authentic uh, accents and dialect and the two children handled it so well. It was like they were almost speaking their first language. And I thought that was absolutely amazing. Uh, the rest of the cast did a fantastic freaking job. There were a couple times where I felt the accent was a little weird. Like when they said like the word Valley, I thought it sounded a little weird. Uh, maybe it was supposed to sound that way, but for me, it was just a little strange hearing it the way they said valet Valley. They'd say Valley. And it's, it, it felt a little forced at times. Uh, other than that though, excellent acting from everybody in this film it was they, it was so man, everybody felt so real and they felt authentic or, or the acting felt authentic. Like they really were living in this time period. Uh, the story was extremely well written. It was a tense story, even though there wasn't a whole lot of like scary things happening. It was the it was the sense of dread throughout the entire film that made it tense. And there were moments where it led up to like this great peak of of tension and then something happens and we start all over again and build up to a new very tense peak and that happened several times during the film and i think that's what made it so scary and then you add the human element of despair and uh, the unknown and all of that l- just created this horrific story and i thought that in itself was scary i didn't have to see a whole lot to be scared it was truly a terrifying story and extremely well written well researched as well Uh, robert eggers did a lot of great research into the period into folklore uh, all these different uh, things surrounding witches and uh, religious beliefs at that time so it was it was just extremely well written and i have to say the cinematography helped out a lot because to make the the entire film feel bleak and desperate and real uh, they used a lot of natural lighting they didn't use artificial light actually the entire thing uh, was was all shot with natural light and the way the shots were set up the the colors used just added to the overall feeling of dread even like when they were inside at night and they were lit up by just a single candle man it looked so good and it was so creepy i thought you know just every everything about the the film aesthetically was amazing it, it was a gorgeous film uh, and if you can already tell i love this movie uh, it currently has a 6.8 on imdb i would probably give this at least a seven and a half maybe an eight. I absolutely loved it. And this film, I think, is one of those where people 
will either love it or hate it. There's not really a whole lot of, of in between. Uh, in my family, I was the only one who liked this film. And I'll tell you what, if you watch this film for like 30 minutes, just give it 30 minutes and you'll know whether or not you're going to like the rest of it. This is actually Robert Eggers' directorial debut. Uh, this is the first screenplay that he's written, I believe. Yeah, this is the first film that he's written and directed, uh, but he normally does like production design. I hope that he continues to do films because I thought he did an amazing job with this one. I was, it was so good. This is one of those films that I would actually buy on Blu-ray uh, and add to my, to my library. It's just such amazing film, uh, truly terrifying, and it just felt so real. So there you go. I, I would give this film at least like a 7.7. 7. There you go. <laughs> just a 7.7 7 for The Witch. Great film. Really loved it. All right, so let's move on to news. And the first bit of news I have isn't really news, but it, it is something that I kind of want to talk about. Uh, this is uh, Humbug, a short film. It's a Christmas-themed horror film. Short film, and, and I kind of just want to share it with you because I thought it was really good. It's been featured in a bunch of different uh, film festivals and short horror film festivals, and I thought it was really well done. And the synopsis is, a moody goth girl deep in the throes of artistic creation is interrupted by her neighbor's incessant Christmas, Christmas music. When Scarlett confronts her cheery, pressed, and perfect neighbor, she finds out looks can be deceiving and to never underestimate the power of Christmas cheer. Just a really good short film. It's like six minutes long. I'll post a link to it in the show notes. You can find that at screenpod.com slash podcast slash 10. So, yeah, how do recommend that you go and check that out? Now, one of the horror blogs that I read a lot is called The Daily Dead, and they have been doing their Daily Dead's 2017 Holiday Gift Guide, and they're going to do it every day uh, up until Christmas, and they've ar they're have they already on day eight. And day one started with some Black Friday deals, and they've gone on to do, like, home decor, artwork, horror-related books, movies, all kinds of stuff. And these are all written by uh, Heather Wixon. So I do recommend that you go and check it out. And I'll post a link to these uh, up on the show notes as well. Uh, next up, Fox's Ghosted gets a new showrunner and six more episodes. If you haven't been watching this show, I actually like this one a lot. It's kind of like a, it's a horror comedy show on Fox and it comes on Sundays. Uh, they are in their mid-season break right now, so there's only seven episodes up. And we watch these on Hulu, so every uh, we usually watch them on Mondays. But uh, Variety reports that Fox has ordered six more episodes of Ghosted, which brings the first season up to 16 episodes. Additionally, Paul Lieberstein of The Office, or the showrunner from The Office, has been brought on uh, as a new executive producer, and showrunner replacing Kevin Etten. And if you haven't seen the show, the synopsis is basically uh, the, series star, the series stars Craig Robinson and Adam Scott as former LAPD detective and a genius true believer in the paranormal who are recruited by a secret government agency known as the Bureau Underground. Each week they investigate supernatural phenomena in an attempt to protect the human race. The series also stars Ali Walker, a deal actor, Akhtar and Amber Stevens West. Uh, this was produced by 20th Century Fox and created by Tom Gormican. So yeah, really good show. I We like this one a lot. Uh, it is genuinely funny, so I do recommend that you go and check that one out. Uh, and Netflix has officially renewed Stranger Things for a third season. I mean, this isn't really a surprise, but now it's just kind of official. And that's really all there is to say about that. And I do want to mention a brand new horror website. Uh, they just launched this week called Dead Entertainment. And uh, I don't know how many people are behind this one, uh, but I, this is probably like my new favorite uh, horror, horror news site. They've been cranking out some really cool articles. Uh, one article they have is all about Tommy Jarvis from the Friday the 13th series. They have a review of Better Watch Out. They have some news about Sabrina, the Teenage Witch, 
which is coming to Netflix. Netflix picked up Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the comic book, uh, and they're going to adapt that as a new series. And I have to say, if you haven't read the comic book, it is extremely dark. This is not like the TV show that was on TV years back, starring Melissa Joan Hart. This is a really dark series, and hopefully Netflix stays true to the to, true to the the comic material and just makes this really dark show that would be extremely interesting. Uh, so yeah, check out DeadEntertainment.com. This is a really cool website. And you can follow them on Twitter at Dead ENT Site. Uh, so check them out, please. Uh, really, really good uh, horror news site. All right, so let's move on to new releases. I kind of do want to talk about a couple of physical releases here. Uh, Misery, which is now on Shout Factory. This was just released this week. And Shout Factory, you know, they do amazing Blu ray productions, they add like a lot of uh, special features director commentary or just commentaries in general, deleted scenes. Uh, I really like their Blu-rays. They do a great job on those. And they always have the best cover art out there. So uh, check out Misery. And then also Death Dream, a.k.a. Dead of Night, which was also written and directed by Bob Clark. That is available as a special edition Blu-ray from Blue Underground. Uh, I do want to recommend you that you check that out. Uh, it's supposed to be pretty good. I have not seen that one yet. Now let's move on to video on demand releases. First up, Shudder. We have quite a few things on Shudder this week, including Document of the Dead, which is a documentary uh, from the set of Dawn of the Dead. We also have Unearth and Unholy, The Path to Pet Cemetery, which is a documentary or the making of uh, Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. Street Trash which is a really weird film, but you should watch it. We have Buried, which uh, starred Ryan Reynolds. P2, which I have not seen, but I, I might watch this one because it is uh, it does take place on Christmas. Lords of Salem, highly recommend that one. I loved it. And the series Fear Itself. If you haven't seen Fear Itself, it was on Netflix years years ago. I highly recommend that you watch this show. It is an anthology series. They only ran for, for, one, se for uh, one season. But I do recommend that you watch this show. It is so good. It is like one of my favorites. So uh, that is now on Shudder. And on Netflix, we have the Jaime Mosan show. This is the guy. He's a Mexican journalist and uh, uf ufologist. He's on like all of the the like UFO documentaries and TV shows, ancient aliens stuff like that. Uh, his own show that he did, season one, is now up on Netflix. Uh, you can check that out. I I plan on checking that out as well. The Temple, which is a new film, is now on Netflix. That's supposed to be pretty good. I've I've seen some some decent reviews on that. Uh, Hiss, which is H I S S S S S S S. I never got around to watching that one, but since it's back on Netflix, I might check that out. And Dark Season 1, this is a German show that looked really interesting. It's very, like, it looks very David Lynch-ish, or esque, I should say. It looks very David Lynch-esque. I do plan on checking that one out. I saw the trailer and got kind of excited for it, so hopefully that turns out to be a good show. And that's all we have for streaming. I've noticed, you know, I don't know if, if you've noticed this, but Netflix's horror section has gone really downhill and they, they hardly doing any new additions to the service uh, every week. Like the new, the new releases on shutter just keep getting longer and Netflix keeps getting shorter, uh, which is kind of sad because I used to watch a whole bunch of horror stuff on Netflix and now the horror section is just starting to dwindle. So uh, very disappointing. I wish I could find a, a website or something that would list all the new stuff coming to Amazon because Amazon's website is so ass backwards. It's really hard to find what's new and what's been added from week to week. So if, if you know of a website that keeps track of all the, the new VOD releases on Amazon, please let me know and I can share that with everybody else. All right. So that's going to wrap up this week's episode. Uh, if you'd like to keep up with me outside of the podcast, you can do so at screenpod.com 
where you can find links to all of my social profiles, subscribe to the podcast, view your favorite podcatcher, and get all the show notes for each episode. ScreamStream is listener supported, and you can support the podcast through Patreon over at patreon.com slash ScreamStream. Donate as little or as much as you like, but if you give at least a dollar or more a month, you'll get the original stream stream you'll get the original scream stream podcast that ran from 2014 to 2015 a week early and you'll also get the behind the scenes podcast when the screaming stops uh, you'll receive a private rss feed that you can add to any podcast app and all of my content will be right there in that one feed uh, but the easiest way to support ScreamStream is to share the podcast with the horror fanatics in your life and help grow the ScreamStream community. Share on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, or wherever you do your social media. Share ScreamPod.com in as many places as you can. Remember to subscribe to the show in Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, and soon we will be in iHeartRadio. And music used for Scream Stream was created by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com. Until next week, I'm James Gass saying, if it was real, the cameraman would be dead too. Good night. Good night.